नमस्कार दोस्तों शिपिंग पाठशाला में एक बार फिर आपका स्वागत है वेलकम टू शिपिंग पाठशाला आई एम प्रोफेसर डी एन मौर्या टुडे आई शैल टॉक ऑन पोर्ट परफॉर्मेंस इंडिकेटर पोर्ट परफॉर्मेंस इंडिकेटर कैन बी ब्रॉडली क्लासिफाइड इन टू कैटेगरी फर्स्ट इज द फाइनेंशियल परफॉर्मेंस एंड सेकेंड इज द फिजिकल परफॉर्मेंस फाइनेंशियल परफॉर्मेंस इज ओनली to the interest of investors and port owners so i will not discuss about the financial performance i will discuss only about the physical port performance indicator on the basis of physical port performance indicator customers can make out which particular port is efficient which is not efficient so if the port is efficient the customer will like to change over to that port if the port is inefficient customer will like to go out from that port to some other port but remember that changing or switching of the port is not so easy for the customer customers means you are talking about the ship owner and cargo owner they cannot easily change the port from change the port of loading up and port of discharge so quickly or without any problem because whatever cargo is loaded at one port that cargo is generated at that particular place we call it cargo hub near to the port area similarly whatever cargo is unloaded that is the import cargo coming from foreign country is also consumed in that local area so this is again a cargo hub consumption and production of the cargo so the customer cannot easily change it from one port to other port because moving the cargo by road or by rail from a far place and coming to the new port bringing to new port for loading on the vessel will be very very costly logistic cost will come come up will become high tco total cost of operation so customers that is shipping line and the cargo owner it is not possible for them to change over the port even if the port are inefficient but in case port has got multiple ter terminals many terminals port is same within the port there are many terminals like let us say case of jawaharlal nehru port it has got five terminals navaseva international container terminal that is dp world then gateway india terminal then singapore pss bharat terminal then navaseva free port terminal so there are large number of terminals inside the port so what happens here your basic thing does not change your cargo hub is same your port is same your road connectivity from the port to the cargo hub remains same your rail infrastructure is same icd is are same cfs is same custom commissioner is same so nothing changes here only the terminal changes so in this case the customer can think of changing over from one terminal to other terminal without affecting its business so this is the importance of port performance indicator which will tell the customer or are on the basis of which customer can take a decision which terminal to operate which terminal the vessel should call so this port performance indicator that is physical port performance indicator i will just take one by one the first one is known as pre berthing waiting time the first physical port performance indicator pre berthing waiting time as the name says name indicates this is the delay caused to the ship before this takes the berth so pre berthing before berthing waiting time how much time vessel has waited so this is defined as the time gap time difference between the vessel reports to the pilot station or sometime we say the vessel drops the anchor at the pilot station pilot station is away from the port roughly 30 40 km or sometime 60 km away from the port from where vessel reports to the port and then port pilot goes to the ship boards and bring the vessel to the port remember ship cannot come to the port on its own the master or captain of the vessel may be very expert 
but he is not authorized to bring the vessel inside the port. Only the port pilot, that is the pilots appointed by the ports, are authorized to bring the vessel from pilot station to the port. Master or captain can take the control of the vessel only when the ship is at sea. But when it comes to the port, it is always navigated or piloted through the port pilot. This is because the pilot is more informed about what is happening in the sea channel. What has happened last 24 hours, the master, captain coming from foreign country may not be aware. So this may lead to the accident. So pilot is well versed what is happening in the channel in last 24 hours. So only pilots, port pilot can, are authorized to bring the vessel to the port. So pre-birthing waiting time or pre-birthing waiting period is defined at the time difference between the vessel reports to the pilot station and the pilot boards on board the pilot means port pilot. So let us say by example, ship has reported to the let us say Mumbai port for Mumbai port. It has come to pilot station in the morning let us say 10 o'clock, 1000 hours. And thereafter, the pilot has gone and boarded the vessel at, let us say, 2 p.m., 1400 hours. So what is the time gap? Time gap is from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., that is 4 hours. So what I will say, pre-birthing time or pre-birthing delay for this vessel is 4 hours. Sometimes the vessel delay, vessel birthing delay or pre-birthing delay becomes very, very significant some port during some particular season or some weather like in case of monsoon go to western side kanla ports and other things you will find that this goes in two weeks seven days ten days eight days okay so pre-birthing waiting period is the time gap between the vessel reports to the port pilot station and the pilot boards on board ship the difference of these two is known as pre-birthing delay so a port having higher pre-birthing delay, it means this is not a good port. The port having the least birthing delay, this is the better port. Let us compare two ports or two terminal within the port. One has got average pre-birthing delay for each vessel in let us say 10 hours. Other one has got a average pre-birthing delay of 2 hours. So customer will prefer to go to the port which has got a terminal which has got a pre-birthing delay of two hours. Now, what are the reasons for pre-birthing delay? What can you think of why the vessel gets delayed? There can be many reasons. One reason, let us say, birth is not vacant. The birth on which ship is supposed to go, there is not vacant. It means already one vessel is working there. Unless the vessel completes previous vessel, sails out from the birth, the next vessel cannot go. So this is one of the reasons that is birth is not vacant. Second reason could be bad weather. IMD has issued a warning, cyclonic warning, vessel cannot move into the channel. That is the second reason. Third reason could be custom has not cleared the vessel. Vessel has arrived with the cargo, but custom has not cleared for loading or loading. So that could be delay. Other reason could be port strike, strike at the port, port implies or the contractor implies, so no work going on, that could be another reason. Other reason could be the port yard is congested. It means there is ship, there is a berth, there is equipment available, people are there, but cargo cannot be moved from ship to the yard because yard is congested. So congestion at the yard also makes the vessel to get delayed. Other reason could be pilot not available, shortage of pilot. There could be, let us say, four or five vessels coming in a day. They have got only two pilots. One pilot does the up and down, makes multiple trip. So pilot not available. Other reason could be that pilot is available, but the pilot launch is under breakdown because pilot takes the pilot launch, high speed boat from the port and goes to the pilot station to board on vessel on board ship. So if the pilot launch is having is under breakdown, has got some problem, then pilot cannot go. So that is another reason. Pilot launch not available. Pilot launch under under breakdown. 
or other region could be equipment breakdown the vessel has to come to the port for cargo operation but crane is defective crane is not working so don't you cannot bring the vessel and actually there bring the vessel and pay to the port that is the charges birth hire charges so ship owner will not like to bring the vessel to the port unless port is ready to work so these are the many regions there could be some more also so you can think of this is the region why the vessel gets delayed or you say why the pre birthing waiting period occurs second performance indicator is the turn round time meaning of turn round time means the time taken by the ship to make one complete turn round at the port at the port means ship has come from foreign country reported to the pilot station so that is the time begins from there ship has to come to the port do the cargo operation and return back to the same place pilot station then pilot will come down and the master will take the control so this complete thing is known as turn round from the time the vessel report to the pilot station and again after doing the cargo operation goes back to the same place where the master will have the control and take the ship to sea so turn round time so turn round time you can break into component that is the, this will consist of pre birthing waiting time plus the time taken by the ship to come from pilot station to the port this is generally fixed time depending upon the distance between the port and the pilot station ship may take 6 hours 8 hours 10 hours 12 hours okay depending upon the distance okay so that is the we call it inward moment time then time taken by the ship at the port that is at birth for cargo operation this is the longest period we say birth stay birth stay means the time the vessel has come to the birth at the port taken the birth at the port and till this leave the birth so that is the birth stay and then thereafter the ship has to go out from the birth and go to the pilot station so pilot that is the port pilot will board the vessel on completion of the cargo operation and take the vessel back to the pilot station we call it outward time so turn round time will have four components or you can say this is a combination of four components first is pre birthing waiting period plus time taken for inward movement for the ship to reach from pilot station to the port berth third is the time taken at birth by the ship for cargo operation that is birth stay and fourth one outward moment time time taken by the ship from port berth up back to the pilot station so this is known as turn round time this is very important for the ship owner shipping line to know how much time ship will take to complete one down we call it turn round time so the ship having or the port having average turn round time of lesser will be regarded as a better port compared to the port which has got average turn round time of the vessel on higher side but remember turn round time has to be compared with specific cargo and the size of the vessel because if the size of the vessel is big carrying more cargo more container this will definitely take more time at the birth for the cargo operation so you cannot compare a vessel of 1000 tus with a vessel of 10000 tus or vessel of 10000 ton of bulk cargo with a vessel of 70000 ton of bulk cargo because here what is going to change birth stay time taken by the ship to do the cargo operation so has to be compared with similar vessels turn around time will be compared with the similar vessel and then port will arrive at the figure what they do generally for all the performance indicator they do the calculation for vessel wise and at the end of the year they take the average for all the vessel and they will say average turn around time for this particular class of vessel was so many days here again higher is the turn around time poor is the performance 
lower is the turnaround time, better is the performance. So customer, that is the shipping line and the cargo owner will always prefer a port which has got lesser turnaround time for the vessel compared to the port which has got higher turnaround time for the vessel. Third one is idle time. Idle time is spent at port by the ship. Idle time is always expressed in percentage. We don't express in absolute term. Idle time is a time during which vessel was idle. No work was going. No work means cargo operation was not going. So let us say the ship was at port for 24 hours. At port means at birth for 24 hours. Out of 24 hours, the vessel did not work. There were no cargo operation for 8 hours. So out of 24 hours, 8 hours, no worse. It means this is one third, 33%. So you can say idle time of the vessel was 33%. But let us say the vessel birth stay was for two days, not one day for two days, 48 hours. And again, vessel was idle for let us say eight hours. So figure is same, idle time is only eight hours in both the cases. But in this case, when the vessel stay is for two days, idle time becomes in percentage, that is the half of this one, 16.6%. Similarly, if the vessel was at birth for four days and idle time was recorded for eight hours, then what happens? Further half becomes 7%. That is why the idle time is recorded in percentage. This will give you the true picture. Absolute figure does not give the true picture. Eight hours of idle time in what? In one day, two days, three days, four days, or ten days. So idle time is always expressed in terms of percentage. Here again, if the idle time of the port is on the lower side, idle time of the vessel for a port is on the lower side, we say this port is better, more efficient, than a port which has got idle time of the higher side. Practically speaking, ships should come straight without any waiting period, come to the port, do the cargo operation without any idle time and then go back. But that does not happen in practical. That was the theoretically we say that should happen. That does not happen in practical. Now the reason for idle time could be equipment breakdown. Vessel it at birth, cargo is available for loading and loading, people are there, but there is a equipment breakdown. So you cannot do the operation. So that could be the reason for the idle time. Similarly, bad weather. Ship has come to the port. Bad weather means basically heavy wind. So you cannot operate the gantry crane. Because of the wind, the crane will have a swing, spreader will have a swing and likely to meet the accident when loading the container into the cell, cellular vessel. Similarly, while putting the container on the tractor trailer also, this is likely to swing and hit the trailer at the places. So during the bad weather, this particular thing happens, that is the idle time do take place. So first reason for idle time is equipment or crane is under breakdown. Second reason could be bad weather. Even in case of heavy rain also, there is no problem for the containers, you can operate it if there is no wind. But in case of bulk cargo, dry bulk cargo, even there, if there is no heavy wind, but if there is a rain, you cannot do the loading and loading of the cargo. Okay, like fertilizers, DAP, MOP, urea, loose food grains, wheat, rice, maize. So these are things, even minerals like iron ore, bauxite, you cannot do the operation when there is a rain. So bad weather means both the things, whether it is heavy wind or it is a rain, both the cases. So these are the reason for the idle time at the port. Other reason could be worker strike, employees are on strike, so crane is not being operated. There could be various reasons for the idle time. The fourth parameter, performance indicator, is output per ship per day. This is generally recorded for bulk vessel. Output per ship per day or per ship day, we say per day means one vessel supposed to occupy one berth at a time. So output per day, it means let us say the ship has brought 50,000 tons of dry bulk cargo. 
it has taken 5 days to discharge the entire 50000 tons of cargo so 50000 tons in 5 days so 50000 divided by 5 10000 it means 10000 tons of the cargo was discharged from the ship at this port on every day on per day basis so you say output per ship per day is 10000 ton similarly let us say the cargo is same 50000 ton and this is discharge let us say in 2 days so 50000 divided by 2 25000 per day so here this indicator higher is the figure better is the port more cargo discharge per day it means this is a better port so in case of output per ship per day the figure should be higher the port having a higher figure is supposed to be better or more efficient than a port which has got a lower figure of output per ship per day this is applicable or this is calculated only for bulk vessel in case of container vessel there is similar performance indicator we call it berth productivity berth productivity is for the container vessel output per ship per day is for bulk vessel so in case of container vessels when you say berth productivity how this is calculated you have to similar like bulk cargo total cargo so here in case of container vessel we say total number of containers we don't go into tus total number of containers 20 feet 40 feet or 45 feet with a reefer has held us any type of container you put them together so many number of containers so total number of containers divided by the berth stay how many days vessel was there at the port okay so let us say the ship had had brought 10000 containers and what is the berth hour berth stay berth stay we have to take into hours not into days because operation of containers are faster than the bulk so here we say berth productivity the unit of berth productivity is containers per hour per berth it is not per day this is per hour per berth it means if let us say the vessel has brought 5000 containers and this has done the complete loading and loading and loading in let us say 100 hours so what is the berth productivity 5000 divided by 1000 sorry 5000 divided by 100 that is 50 so we say berth productivity of this vessel at this port was achieved as 50 containers per hour okay here you don't calculate in terms of days you calculate in number of hours so berth stay berth stay means the time the vessel has come at the berth till this sails out the total time will be taken into hours so total containers handled whether loaded or unloaded you can add them together 500 loaded 500 discharge total become 1000 okay or let us say 2000 loaded 3000 discharge total become 5000 so 5000 containers in 100 hours 100 hours means 4 hours in 96 days so 4 hour sorry 4 days in 96 hours so 4 days and 4 hours that becomes 100 hours so 5000 container divided by 100 hours you get 50 containers per hour so we can say per hour or per hour per berth this is the berth productivity other performance indicator for the container vessels we also call it container productivity so container productivity is always taken in terms of number of crane hours that is you have to find and then you give the unit so many containers per hour per crane it means the vessel has deployed more than one crane see any vessel long vessel will always have more number of crane as much as possible so as to ensure that operation is faster and the turn round time is reduced berth stage reduced so port can deploy more number of crane when you deploy more number of cranes each crane has worked for certain hours so you add the total crane hours you get the total crane hours then you what you do how to calculate it you find out the total number of containers handled handles means either loaded or discharged 
divided by total crane hours not divided by the birth hour but by the total crane hours we let us take the take the same example 5000 containers were handled on board ship earlier we say the vessel was there at the birth for 100 hours now we say let us say two cranes were deployed when two cranes were deployed let us say the first one was deployed for something 100 hours entire period of time one crane was deployed for 100 hours second crane was deployed only for 50 hours so total becomes 150 hours so 5000 container divided by 150 so that become the crane productivity per container per hour so 5000 divided by 150 it means 500 divided by 15 so what you get something close to 35 or something so lesser than the birth productivity so in case of crane productivity you have to find out the productivity by adding the crane hours all the cranes crane number 1 2 3 how many hours they have worked together and then arrive at the figure remember more cranes you have the better birth productivity but crane productivity will depend upon performance of each crane crane productivity is not important for the shipping line this is important for the port shipping line interested only in the birth productivity how much containers you can handle in one hour at one birth or from one ship so crane productivity becomes important for the port people for the port management to find out the reason why one particular crane is not doing better why one is doing better other is not doing better so let us say they have got two cranes one crane has handled 50 containers other crane has handled let us let us say about 30 containers in 2 hours time so port can analyze and find out why the contain why the crane which has handled 30 containers it was on the lower side so there could be many reason either the crane is designed crane is not of that design old cranes will have the lower cycle or the operator is new he is is not very fast to handle it or the connectivity the tractor trailer coming from the yard to the port they are not reaching in time so crane is available is ready with the container to load or unload but trailer is not available so what happens if it cannot load and unload unless the trailer comes to the jetty on the berth below the vessel so this is the tool for the port management to find out the reason for a particular crane why the productivity was on the lower side but remember if all the cranes are all the cranes are efficient you will find that they will boost the birth productivity all crane working with a better efficiency you will find that performance will be better right so these are the port performance indicator out of which three are common to all types of vessel that is pre birthing waiting period turn around time and idle time spent at birth in percentage other parameters output per ship per day is applicable to the bulk vessel and birth productivity crane productivity applicable to the container vessel importance of the parameter performance indicator is basically for the customer that is the shipping line as well as to cargo owner cargo owner in case of bulk vessel and shipping line in case of containers so on the basis of these parameter they can assess which port is better for them and therefore they can try to change over go to the port which has got a better efficiency this is all about the port performance indicator in two day session that is will finish and those who have not subscribed please subscribe to my channel so that you can see the upcoming video with this i finish today bye bye see you in next session